fear less. It doesn't mean that you don't fear. It means that you have taken the time to understand how to fear less. Like for me, I'm really afraid of heights, but I love viewing things from that vista. Yeah. So it's, it's quite the conundrum. <laughs> but you only have courage in the face of fear. So fear can be a powerful motivator. It isn't something that we have to sit in. It is something that we can utilize if we have the tools to utilize it. Fear exists in the future. And then we pull it into our present to change our current actions instead of the other way around. We can take our current actions and push them into the future to create the experience that we desire. How did we find our way through it? And how do we continue to find our way through it? Going from fear to freedom the techniques that we've used that have changed everything. Be one facing that fear to understand our own courageous opportunity within us so we can grow as a soul, as a person, as our character, and show those around us, not from an egoic standpoint, but as an inspiration that we can do this and therefore so can they. Lately, there have been a lot of individuals that we've been talking to who have been in fear mode, and they've talked a lot about fight or flight. And for us, there's a third that we talk about a lot, which is freeze. And it really got us talking like fear being such a big thing and there being so many different approaches to it and so many different categories that are even being left out of the discussion. How did we find our way through it and how do we continue to find our way through it? So a great topic for us to talk about today is going from fear to freedom, the techniques that we've used that have changed everything, like game changers for us when it comes to fear. And I use this all the time in our practice or when we're helping other individuals around that. And one of the key things is we're all attempting to escape fear, right? We think that we need to just have no fear whatsoever in our lives. And it's one of the things I address in silencing your inner critic. We've been told for so long that we should just not have an inner critic. Like it should just go away. And it's the same thing with fear. We should not have fear in our lives. We should just be in this place of constant courage. But you only have courage in the face of fear. So fear can be a powerful motivator. But it isn't something that we have to sit in. It is something that we can utilize if we have the tools to utilize it. I agree. Maybe we can start by kind of differentiating between escaping fear and avoiding fear. I really feel that escaping fear kind of tends to be from the overego and avoiding fear tends to be from the underego. When we're escaping it, it's like, as you said, it's kind of that overego, that bravado, that, you know, I'm fearless. I don't fear anything, blah, 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 right? When avoiding fear is from that under underego where it's, I don't, I don't value myself enough. I have a low self-worth, right? And so I don't feel like I can actually step up and be courageous in, in the face of fear. Yes. And being willing to take the word fearless and look at it differently. Fear less. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you don't fear. It means that you have taken the time to understand how to fear less. Mm -hmm. I like that. Right? And when we can embrace it from that ego standpoint, as you were talking about, because the overego or the underego, the underego would have us picking our own backsides because we're in fear mode. How dare I? I'm so weak. I'm so bad for being in fear. Everyone else seems, and we're going to talk about this, because a lot of individuals I assist, that's what they do. Like they're so in a cycle of being afraid and then being mad at themselves for being afraid, which then causes more fear, which then, so it's a vicious cycle. Mm. Or they have an overego and the fear's there, but they'll never admit it. 
And so then it gets, it's almost worse because it's such a block that it gets suppressed and then it gets stuck in the body. Mm. And the body is constantly tense because the fear is there. And that's what we talk about with freeze, right? When you are driving and an animal freezes on the road because it's so afraid that it can't even move. That's what happens when you don't address the fear, right? When you avoid the fear. So we're all taught about fight or flight, but so often we forget about freeze mode, which is the avoid mode. And it's important that we dive into that because most people are frozen by fear. And that was a podcast we had done earlier. Mm -hmm. And then they don't realize what has them frozen. Because they're like, well, I'm not fighting and I'm not running, right? So one of the key takeaways from this is if you're frozen and you don't know why, you have to understand and embrace the fear that has us frozen, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's, um, I love that. Embracing the fear, uh, facing the fear, something where it's, where there's that uh, acronym where it's like fear stands for get everything and run. Um, or face everything and rise. And I really, really like that because it is a way to understand you know, why is this experience presenting itself? Because fear can be presented in so many ways. It's such a, it's such a subjective experience, yeah. right? What might be fearful to me would not be fearful to you or vice versa or to the world or to cultures or, or different people given their backgrounds or, or i mean there's so many a, there's there's so many aspects of fear um, like for me i'm really afraid of heights but i love i love viewing things from from that vista yeah. so it's it's quite the conundrum <laughs> um <Anyway. yeah. laughs> um but it's uh you know like when when we were flying for example right you know it's just mm -hmm. like man like i love that feeling but i was also like had that pit in my stomach like oh my gosh we're really really high right yeah. um and so i just man it it is interesting how these things get forward come forward but you know are they brought forward more from that place of can i learn something about myself and that's exactly it and to me, there's a difference between facing and embracing. Mm, okay. And what you just discussed, which is key element number three, yeah. right? What you just discussed was not only facing, but embracing the fear, right? Mm. Because facing it is, I know I'm afraid of heights. I'm facing that fear. I'm not just avoiding it and pretending like I'm not afraid of heights. I'm facing the fact that I have a fear of heights. But now I'm taking the next step and I'm embracing that fear and moving through it anyway. And that is a part that takes the courage or the hoop spa or whatever you want to call it, right? Like <laughs> I'm doing it. Yeah. And whatever it takes to help you navigate into that, maybe you need someone with you the first few times to embrace whatever it is that you're afraid of. And then eventually, like for me, it was the fear of being trapped, right? And I would tell you, like, I don't like tunnels because I feel trapped. Mm -hmm. And I had to figure out what was it that caused me to feel that way. And when I was little, my brothers, we were playing a game and they didn't mean to, but I ended up locked in a freezer, right? Mm -hmm. And I was in there for a while and it freaked me out. And from that point on, I was scared of being trapped. And so I had to face that and understand, then move through that with someone with me that was like, it's going to be okay. We're fine. Keep your eyes open. Don't close your eyes. Look. Then there's the body sensations that come along with fear, right? Another tip, don't overlook the body sensations that go along with fear mm -hmm. and find the ways to counter those body sensations. You talked about the pit in your stomach. I, my breath got really rapid, right? I'm like, <gasps> because mm -hmm. of course, fight, flight, or freeze. Mm -hmm. 
when you were literally experiencing frozen by fear yeah. a little a little too literal in this one <laughs> exactly and i wanted to like get i wanted to claw my way out of the car right like i wanted to run but i was frozen in a place and frozen from the freezer, <laughs> from the freezer yeah um but i had to counter those body feelings right so i had to deepen my breath because i noticed my breath was too shallow so okay deep in my breath. I noticed I was gripping mm -hmm. everything around me. So I had to release my grip and calm that. I had you with me. It's okay. It's okay. You can keep your eyes open. It's okay. And so I had the calming external. If you don't have a calming external, listen to some calming music. But whatever it takes to embrace that fear so that you can navigate through it enough times that it might still cause a little angst in you, but it doesn't own you anymore. Mm -hmm. And it changes the game mm -hmm. because now you're not, your life isn't determined by avoiding your fears. It is determined by you choosing what you desire to do. And if there's something, that you're afraid of that's in between you and achieving your goal, you're like, eh, I can do it. Yeah. I like that. Kind of reminds me of just going back to when we're all children and how fear is just kind of different, right? I mean, it's definitely safer to be to sit and just have people be able to carry you and take care of you and all that. But there's this desire, this innate desire for us to want to shift from sitting to crawling, crawling to standing, standing to walking. And even though we'd never done it before, you know, all the chances in the world to be afraid because each one of those steps creates new opportunities for something bad to happen to our, our bodies, right? But, you know, we're not, I, I mean, I'm sure that maybe there are experiences of that, but f most of the time uh, we see not very much fear, but empowerment. We see a pathway to freedom Freedom in that sense. It's like, okay, I'm moving. This is um, by choosing this new thing that I've never done, that's unknown to me. I feel freedom. And that desire is greater than the paralysis of what could happen. Yeah. Because the freedom is experienced now. That's the present moment. Yeah. And I think that's another key element mm -hmm. is. You know, I talked about the fear stemming from being locked in that freezer in the past. But I wasn't locked in the freezer when I was in the tunnel. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. So you were able to see that for me. But I was so caught in the fear that I couldn't see that. So I had to find a way to bring myself back into that present moment. So that I wasn't experiencing the fear of past. I was in the present knowing that I was safe. So where does fear really come from? Right. Right? Absolutely. Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are. It helps us more than we can possibly say. And so much of our past experiences fuel our potential future experiences. And um, I understand why. I mean, that's, that's kind of how we learn, right? You know, if we, so another reason is as kids, you know, we don't know that when a fire near a stove or something is, is up and we put our hands, we hear the top, we pull back and it's like, oh yeah, probably don't want to do that again, right? And that's going to help us next time we see something to not keep, to keep doing that, right? So there is some innate aspects of, of this that are coming forward. But what about when it comes to understanding who we are? You know, there is that, that fear creeps up inside the soul, inside the gut, inside the brain. We start projecting of, well, are people going to make fun of me? You know, am I going to look bad? Um, you know, are... There's so many things that we can think of that is, you know, am I going to go backwards? Am I going to fail? You know, 
yeah, what are what is everyone else around me going to think of me? Uh, I mean, these are these are thoughts that I know I've had, and I I don't know anyone who hasn't had them. But how do we get, as you say, how do we get through them? Not suppress them or get over them because that's those are avoiding and and not embracing, right? Mm -hmm. But how do we actually get through them? And one of the things that really helped me, um, I experienced a lot of anxiety, fear centered around golf when I wasn't playing my best. Um, you know, and these are irrational fears. It's not like I'm fighting for my life by any means, but you know, it really meant a lot to me and, and playing well did because it shaped my life. This was supposed to be my career, right? And so when I started playing poorly, I was started to get afraid standing over a shot. I'm afraid I'm going to hit it in the water. I'm afraid I'm going to you know, lose a golf ball and, and gain extra shots and then shoot a poor score. And then I'm going to lose my spot on the team. And then I'm not going to be able to be a professional golf. I mean, it was like one little thing created this cascade ripple effect for negative negativity in, in my mind, which felt real, but didn't even exist. Yeah. And the greatest, greatest lesson I learned was how much fear exists in the future. And then we pull it into our present to change our current actions instead of the other way around. We can take our current actions and push them into the future to create the, the experience that we desire. And it doesn't have to be one of fear. It can be one of embracing the unknown. It can be one facing that fear to understand our own courageous opportunity within us so we can grow as a soul, as a person, as our character, and show those around us, not from an egoic standpoint, but as an inspiration that we can do this and therefore so can they. Yeah, exactly. So reset, like the consistent mm -hmm. reset. If you feel that fear of the future based on the past, then you have the power of the pause as nice. we constantly call it, right? And remind yourself that, yes, I am afraid that this might happen. And that's something I watched you do in golf. If that mental fear hit you, you literally stepped away, took that pause, breathed through it so that your body actually reset, created a new mental model of success, then reapproached the ball. So it was a complete reset. And that took training. Mm -hmm. It isn't as though it's a once and done. And that is another key, man. We are going to say that so many times <laughs> because we all want the magic bullet. Come yeah. on. Like who doesn't? Yeah. But it isn't even this, even finding freedom from fear, not that it's going to go away, just having the tools to free yourself. It takes consistent, mindful practice and then understanding how to utilize it. One thing I remind myself of consistently is the, th the fears I developed in my youth don't have to own me now. Mm. Because in my youth, when I developed a fear, I didn't have the awareness to differentiate between you use the hot stove, right? Mm -hmm. When my parents told me that oh my gosh, oh my gosh, don't put your hand there. That's hot, that's hot. I didn't know the difference between that's dangerous to you or I'm bad mm. for putting my hand on the hot stove, right? And so there's a compound effect. All I could tell was that I upset my parents. From my view, from a little person's view, we don't have the cognitive ability to differentiate. So now in my adult life, I have to move through the fear of upsetting someone when I make a mistake. Mm. And so not only am I unraveling the fear of the, the action, but I'm also unraveling the fear of upsetting someone else, right? So we have to look at all of the fears and we have to be with all of the fears and then we have to move through. Mm all of those fears. And that's why it's so important to be willing to be with it, to face it, and then to develop your strategy for moving through it. It's brilliant, love.
Absolutely. I think that's such a key, key aspect. And that probably fuels a lot of the ego that we experience around fear, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if, if it is, I'm bad, and we don't know how to differentiate that, then no wonder we either have under ego because we are lowering our self-worth or we have over ego because we're attempting to you know, cover that up. And so we get over ego, which is, you know, a facade. Yeah. Or our bodies are always so tense, right? Right. That's and I, that is so, so important to recognize mm-hmm. because if we're in a situation and we don't actually feel like we're feeling fear, but our whole bodies start to go like this, mm-hmm. then there's likely fear being triggered somewhere. And it isn't like we have to go through analysis paralysis to figure out what that is. We simply have to release the fear from our physical so that we can move on because there's obviously something going on in our body that's triggering fear in our body. So acknowledge that. Breathe into it. Massage. Like if suddenly you're doing this, relax and massage your hands. If they're like, oh, danced up, like, ugh. Mm -hmm. So just massage them down and like, it's okay. We're good. We're going to navigate this. You know, things happen that on a subconscious level, maybe we're not there yet. We're not acknowledging. But our body remembers. Mm -hmm. And so until we're recalling it, acknowledge your body. So there are just so many areas around fear that just stick with us. And we need to address that at every level, but embrace it as well. Mm. Don't avoid it. Don't let it own you and be frozen or run from it or fight. Like, not everyone is out to get us. For the most part, it's us that is doing the most damage to ourselves. Excellent, excellent point. And I can maybe put a quick story on that. And yeah. That centered around um, my breathing. Mm-hmm. You know, I was struggling so much with breathing out of my nose and ended up finally in November getting uh, surgery for my deviated septum. And uh, I didn't realize how much I was putting my body through stress because you know, I've gone through you know, almost a decade now of intense, continual practice of managing my anxiety, managing fear, learning how to use breath work and meditation and uh, resetting the mindset so that we're in a positive state and and moving through fear. All these techniques that, that we've been using that work fantastic. Um, and then in the last year, it's like my body just couldn't take it anymore from not being able to breathe. And I felt so stressed out and I wasn't like, I wasn't stressed, but my body felt stressed here to exactly your point. Mm-hmm. And I think that's an area that we're not really like we as a, as a society is not putting a lot of emphasis on. And I know cause I was there. I didn't put enough emphasis on it. Just figuring out, oh, you know, I, I know these tools, I can get through it. Like, sure. But you know, I'm, I can't, if I'm in my own way, yeah. right. Which is what fear in and of itself is it's us kind of in many ways getting in our own way right yeah. and so when i finally you know one of the fears was about getting the surgery it wasn't it was an irrational one but it was still a fear and it was just like i just i didn't want something to happen and so finally thanks to you my love and my support and you took a really good care of me and i'm very grateful um but once i got that taken care of and I'm able to breathe now. I mean, my body is all relaxing. And these last couple of weeks, um, I started really massaging, like you're saying, because I spent years clenching at night, you know, because I was, I would wake up and my, I was like clenching my fists and my jaw and uh, like this. And, and anyone who, who knows me knows I'm not a, like, I'm not angry person. So then why was I like this, you know, as if I'm ready to fight and I'm sleeping? Which is the exact opposite time of when I'm, you know, if we're ever going to fight, it's not going to be when we're sleeping. <laughs> Fighting the wind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so something was clearly off and that was my body actually telling me where I was 
and what needed to shift in order for me to get back to find my harmony, my personal balance, right? Yeah. And so I, I've been massaging my my different parts of my my head. I didn't realize how much of my muscles from here, like the top of my head all the way down to my shoulders, were taking over for the rest of my body. And so just by doing that for the, every day for the last two and a half, two and a half weeks now, um, I've seen a massive difference in my cogn- cognitive abilities, <laughs> which didn't show when I just stumbled <laughs> over the word. <laughs> um, my recall, <laughs> um, just my, uh, even my, my, um, my reactions, just like whether it's playing golf or playing pickleball or things like that. And just the way that my body moves, I didn't, I didn't feel like I was in as much pain. It was amazing. I was surprised how much it was affecting the whole way my body was feeling. And so I was unintentionally putting my body through so much stress, which in return was then hurting me because I couldn't really breathe. And that breathing was putting me into fight or flight. And then I was overthinking things. And then I wasn't able to just relax and use the techniques that I know how to use to the fullest extent. So just that simple little thing can make all the difference. And and that's one example of probably thousands of different things that are happening to so many people right now in this world. That if we just make one simple awareness check and we say, okay, this is what's kind of causing this ripple effect, then I can stop worrying about all of the symptoms and really get back to the actual source issue. And it can make all the, it can just completely change your life. Yeah. So that's your homework. Take some time, either right now, since you have time, you're watching this, you're listening. So we're asking you to take time and just feel through what is it that's holding you back as far as fear and what are you going to do about it? Which one of these tips or tools, or maybe all of them, are you going to use right now? The other homework, go check out the rest of the site. See what else you want to listen to that can help you as you navigate and embrace fear. Thanks.